All right, we're looking at a, a fun flow extension today uh, that leverages the upcoming reactive screens capability. You can try it out with the reactive screens pilot. Let's take a look at what reactive screens can do. So here I have got some accounts and I've got a list view and I can kind of manipulate my list view. I've also got some cases. I can go over here. It's a sep separate list view. And this is all pretty good. Uh, list views have been around a long time in Salesforce. Uh, but there are some gaps in list views, are there not? Here are a couple gaps that have been open for more than 15 years, actually, uh, since the very beginning of ID Exchange. One is simply being able to export data to Excel from a list view. Uh, and another is being able to define a default sort order. So one of the things we thought we'd do is explore how you might do list views in flow. So we've got data table, uh, but we needed something to let people configure their views. And so we created something that's called quick query. What you're looking at is a flow screen it's made of it has two components the top half is the quick query component and the bottom half is data table if you're not familiar with data table it's a great component you can add to flow um, it's absolutely fantastic so what are we looking at right here well i'm looking at all the accounts that have a name that contains caribou and you can see that i've got my i've got these filter buttons right here uh, and I can dynamically change the filters and notice that it updated in real time. Uh, and, and I can do some other things here with this view. I can click here and basically modify my columns. So let's add a few columns. And then I can set the sort order. I can set the sort order with multiple multiple fields. And now immediately I've got an updated filtered view and I've got, so I could do something like I could say this equals, equals uh, Four, I expect to have no results if I do that. And that, that worked out exactly as I expected. Each time I'm changing one of these, it's doing an updated query. So I'm getting my results. So I have a very dynamic view here. But also, this view isn't just for accounts. I actually have access to all of my objects here. So I can do this, for example, and suddenly see cases. And I have a different set of filters here. Now what I can do here, let's go, uh, let's say that I want subject to be not equal to foo. And that I expect is not gonna change either of these. Uh, now, however, I can save views here. So I'm gonna click this save view thing. And it basically says, What kind of view do you want to create? So I'm going to create this view and now I can come back to that. So if I uh, do something else here, like let's say that I want st that I have status uh, not equal to new uh, and that's uh, showing no data, but I can go back to my not foo and have it right here. So I've got a persistent set of views here. Uh, and have the ability to craft those views. Those are saved as records. And then another nice thing here, you saw that, that 30,000 points of CSV uh, export. So all I have to do here is uh, say I want it exported and there I go. And then over here, it showed up on my other monitor, but I will show you right here we have the csv file you can see how instantaneous that was um, which is kind of cool uh, so very fun little component let's take a look at the flow that's running this 
So very super simple flow. You can see that basically this is one screen and it's got an upsert. Why does it have an upsert? Well, one of the things you want to be able to do here is update things. So let's change this to a very important case and click next. And you can see that it updated that. And if we go to traditional cases, you can see that that was persistently done here. So we've got a nice, and I could have a, a big list here. I could have a list of eight cases and I could just make my update here and there and here and over here and then click next and they're all saved at the same time, which is pretty nice. Uh, and that would all just work automatically if you install this flow. This flow is available in the Quick Query package. So what we have here are those two components I mentioned, the new Quick Query and the latest version of Data Table. So how does this all work? The key to reactivity is, is mapping, sort of wiring up the outputs of one thing on the screen to the inputs of something else on the screen. When you have reactive screens turned on, every change will be immediately propagated through those wirings. So in this case, we've got quick query doing new queries every time you change the filter or when you switch from one object to another. And we want to pass that resulting set of data to data table. So how we do it is we don't use the normal way you map stuff into data table. Instead, we go down here and you can see input data is serialized, is checked. So that's another option. It's one. Of, it's the third different option you have for how you can provide data into a data table. Uh, this was the second one, Apex defined input data, but, but we have input data is serialized. And you can see here that I've specified that I'm wiring up a field on QuickQuery called record data string all. That's one of the outputs that QuickQuery produces. If we go down here, we can take a look and you can see that there is a output called record data string all. So we're mapping the output of QuickQuery and we're having that come into data table. And that means that every time Quick Query does a new query, it packages into what's called, what we're calling a record data string, passes it out of its outputs, and then it comes in here to data table. And we're also specifying what the name is of that record data string. What the, what's the object that it represents? Uh, and what's interesting here is that we also have reactive wiring going in the other direction. Why do we need that? Well, if we go back here and look at export to CSV, remember how one of the choices here is selected rows, export selected records? Well, how does the top quick query component know what's selected in the data table? Same idea, reactive wiring. So if I select one item here and don't select another row, that is updating an output on data table. And if we go back here to Quick Query, you can see that it's got two different, it's actually got four different outputs from that data table component are wired back up to the inputs of Quick Query. So we've got kind of a circular relationship. The outputs of each component go into the inputs of the other component. Uh, and in this case, Quick Query is generating, uh, is, is taking uh, new outputs from data table. So data table uh, now produces, in addition to the many other things it produces, output edited serialized rows and output selected rows string. So it will, it will output the selected rows and also uh, uh, separately edited rows. It will also output the sort direction and sorted by information. If you change the sort order, that information flows back here into this view. And when you bring back the view, it will have the same sort order that you were last using. And a final point that's worth mentioning is that these views are personal views. So your views will be stored as records uh, and 
you will have them you will be able to come back to them the next time you as a user uh, go to this page and you won't have to deal with everyone else's views as well so powerful little component now if you want to try it out um, the first thing you have to do is make sure you're in the reactive screens pilot and that pilot is right here you can find it by going to trailhead and just searching for reactive screens you'll find this pilot uh, and you can find information on how to join the pilot uh, and hopefully we will be able to make reactive screens generally available um, I am uh, hoping uh, expecting uh, October right now uh, will be when it is generally available uh, so we still have another six months to go until uh, this is uh, easily available for everyone, but um, invite you to try it out.